In a late afternoon, in an open savanna near a patch of woodland in South Africa, a young Australopithecus africanus child was waiting around for her mother and kin who were out foraging. The group was gathering food in a landscape rich with tubers and seasonal fruits, yet shadowed by the constant threat of larger African predators. As the adults focused on extracting nutrient-rich roots, their attention momentarily diverted from the curious juvenile. The perfect conditions emerged for an ambush predator. As the child had been recently weaned, the mother must have been desperate to collect ample food for the child and herself. In that desperation, she may have lost her vigil on the child. The child's small size and approximately 20 to 25 pounds, still developing situational awareness and position at the group's periphery made it ideal prey. The very adaptations that made Australopithecines successful ground foragers, their upright posture and reduced body hair, made their young conspicuously vulnerable to an ancient threat from above. This momentary lapse in vigilance, perhaps lasting no more than a few heartbeats, would prove fatal. Perched nearly invisibly in the acacia canopy or on a rocky outcrop, a massive bird of prey, likely a Pleistocene relative of the modern crowned hawk eagle, had been monitoring the hominin group's movements. With stereoscopic vision capable of detecting the slightest motion from hundreds of meters away, the raptor focused on the isolated juvenile. Modern crowned eagles, or Stephanoetus coronatus, are known to take prey up to 35 pounds using a hunting strategy perfected over millions of years of evolution. The attack occurred with terrifying speed and precision. Launching from its vantage point, the eagle descended at speeds approaching 80 kilometers an hour. Its powerful hind talons, capable of exerting over 200 psi of pressure, extended forward in a killing configuration. The strike targeted the child's craniofacial region. The talons punctured through the relatively thin orbital bones with sufficient force to immediately incapacitate the young hominin. Comparative studies of modern eagle kills show this hunting method typically causes instantaneous death through traumatic brain injury or rapid exsanguination. Post-mortem damage patterns on the fossilized skull reveal the subsequent feeding behavior. The raptor's talons left distinctive paired puncture marks in the orbital roof measuring approximately 9 to 11 millimeters apart, precisely matching the hind talon spacing of large African eagles. As the predator fed, its claws created characteristic can-opener fractures along the delicate bones surrounding the orbits, where it peeled back sections of bone to access the nutrient-rich brain tissue. Numerous fine, irregular scratch marks radiating across the frontal bone and maxilla indicate where the eagle's talons maintain grip during feeding. Patterns identical to those documented on modern monkey skulls killed by crowned eagles in the Thai forest of Ivory Coast. The fossil's taphonomic condition provides further crucial evidence. Unlike mammalian carnivores' kills, which typically disarticulate the mandible, the tong skull preserves the lower jaw in anatomical position, a hallmark of eagle feeding behavior where the cranium is consumed while leaving the mandible intact. This preservation pattern mirrors modern eagle feeding sites where skulls accumulate beneath the nest or plucking areas. Significantly, among the associated fauna at Tong, over 30 baboon skulls show identical damage patterns, suggesting the site may represent a Pleistocene raptor accumulation zone. The broader evolutionary implications of this predation event are profound. If large raptors regularly preyed upon juvenile hominins, this would have constituted a significant selective pressure, potentially shaping multiple aspects of early human behavior and social structure. Modern human groups universally exhibit extended biparental care, constant child supervision, and complex anti-predator vigilance behaviors that may have deep roots in countering aerial predation threats. 
The Tong child's skull thus serves not merely as evidence of a single tragic event, but as a crucial data point in understanding the environmental pressures that shaped the evolution of human cognition and social organization. The idea of humans being hunted by wild animals stirs a deep, primal fear. When such events occur today, when a person falls victim to a predator, it sparks shock and fascination. These rare but dramatic encounters make headlines, inspire films, and fill books, reminding us of a time when humans were not always at the top of the food chain. Australopithecus africanus occupies a vital place in the evolutionary journey of humankind. Existing roughly between 3.3 and 2.1 million years ago, this species lived in what is now southern Africa, adapting to a landscape that was a mosaic of open savannas and wooded areas. It represents an important transitional form, one that bridges the evolutionary gap between the more ape-like ancestors and the emergence of the genus Homo. First brought to scientific attention through the discovery of the Tong child in 1924 by Raymond Dart, Australopithecus africanus challenged dominant scientific views of the time. Anatomically, Australopithecus africanus displayed a fascinating mix of primitive and advanced traits. Its skeletal structure shows clear adaptations for bipedal locomotion. The pelvis, femur, and foot bones all indicate that this species walked upright, much like modern humans. However, other features, such as its long arms, curved fingers, and relatively mobile shoulder joints, suggest that it still relied partly on tree climbing possibly for foraging or as a means of escaping predators. This combination of terrestrial and arboreal abilities highlights the adaptive versatility of the species. In terms of cranial capacity, Australopithecus africanus had a brain size of approximately 400 to 500 cubic centimeters, larger than that of chimpanzees, but far smaller than that of modern humans. The shape of the skull, particularly its rounded cranium and reduced brow ridge, hints at the beginning of changes in brain organization. Its face was relatively flat, with a projecting jaw and small canines, and its teeth were large and molarized, suited for chewing tough plant material. This suggests a diet that was varied and included fruits, roots, nuts, and possibly small animals or insects. One of the most complete adult skulls, popularly known as Mrs. Pless, was discovered in the Sturkfontein Caves of South Africa. This skull, along with Tong, has provided valuable insights into the physical appearance, locomotion, and ecological niche of the species. Fossil evidence indicates that Africanus individuals stood around 1.1 to 1.4 meters tall and weighed between 30 and 45 kilograms. They also exhibited sexual dimorphism, with males being noticeably larger than females, which may have influenced their social structure and mating patterns. From an evolutionary perspective, Australopithecus africanus is widely considered to be either a direct ancestor or a close relative of the early Homo species, such as Homo habilis. It marks a critical evolutionary phase where hominins had already embraced upright walking but had not yet developed the significantly larger brain and advanced tool use behavior seen in later species. While stone tools have not been directly associated with Africanus, the cognitive developments visible in their cranial features suggest increasing neurological complexity 
and behavioral flexibility. The fossil of the Tong child has been examined to determine its age at death and to understand signs of developmental stress. The analysis of the first permanent molars, which take about 2.72 years to form, combined with root growth measurements, places the age at death closer to 3.7 to 3.9 years. Grooves in the tooth enamel indicate a stress event at around 2.5 years of age. While such defects can result from malnutrition, illness, or trauma, the researchers considered whether weaning stress might have been the cause. The Tong child likely faced a physiological stressor at 2.5 years old, possibly due to illness, before dying at around 3.7 to 3.9 years. This research refines our understanding of growth and development in early hominids, showing that even young individuals experienced health challenges similar to those seen in modern primates and humans. Modern society, especially in the industrialized world, tends to believe that we are insulated from such dangers. We live in protected environments, shielded by walls, tools, and technology. Yet, beneath this illusion of safety lies a lingering fear, the fear of being hunted, of being vulnerable. This anxiety may be more than cultural, it may be deeply evolutionary. While few birds of prey possess the size and strength to threaten humans, several formidable species blur the line between myth and reality. Across Uganda, chilling accounts persist of crowned hawk eagles attacking people. Initially dismissed as folklore, these stories gained scientific credibility when researchers documented eagles routinely hunting large primates, such as young bonobos and mandrels. This evidence raises a profound question. Could our small-bodied ancestors have faced similar aerial threats? The crowned hawk eagle stands as nature's most accomplished primate hunter responsible for nearly half of all recorded raptor attacks on primates. Their hunting strategy demonstrates terrifying precision. Globally, 81 raptor species, including hawks, eagles, falcons, and owls, include primates in their diets. What makes birds such effective predators begins with their feathers evolutionary marvels that provide both lift and stability during flight. The crowned hawk eagle represents an exceptional case, regularly subduing prey as large as itself through specialized feather adaptations. Outer primaries providing thrust while inner secondaries generate lift. These aerial hunters possess sensory advantages that make them nearly perfect predators. This combination of physical adaptations and hunting strategies suggests our ancestors likely faced genuine threats from aerial predators. The Tong child skull, bearing distinctive raptor-inflicted damage, provides tangible evidence of this ancient danger. As we work to conserve these magnificent birds today, we simultaneously preserve living connections to predation pressures that may have shaped human evolution. The world's most formidable eagles possess specialized hunting anatomy that makes them apex predators. Their powerful legs terminate in grasping talons, capable of exerting crushing forces up to 500 psi, evolutionary weapons that deliver killing blows with terrifying precision. While their hooked beaks tear flesh, it's the razor-sharp talons that pierce skulls and penetrate vital organs. Different species have evolved distinct talon configurations. Mammal-hunting eagles like the crowned hawk eagle feature thick curved claws and reinforced ankles, 
with a hind talon often as thick as a human finger. In African forests, primates make up 85 to 90 percent of their diet, with colobus, mangabees, and guenons as frequent targets. Their hunting strategy combines patience and precision. After silent observation, they strike in a sudden swoop, often killing prey on the forest floor before carrying it vertically into the trees. These eagles demonstrate remarkable teamwork. One individual may flush out monkeys by flying low while another attacks from a concealed angle, sometimes using soft whistles to lure curious prey. Their two-year breeding cycle, unusual among birds, prevents overhunting by allowing primate populations to recover between nesting seasons. This evolutionary arms race has shaped primate behavior. Monkeys form mixed species groups for better predator detection in regions where crowned or harpy eagles hunt. While medium-sized monkeys are primary targets, crowned hawk eagles also hunt savanna species like baboons and small antelopes. The crowned hawk eagles' hunting tactics and physical prowess offer a window into the dangers early hominins faced. Like the Tong child's predator, these eagles combine stealth, strength, and surgical precision. Traits that likely influenced primates and potentially hominins, social evolution. Their continued dominance in African ecosystems reminds us that Earth's most effective predators often wear feathers, not fur. Throughout history, and especially in prehistory, humans lived closely with large predators. We were not always the hunters, often we were the hunted. The psychological divide we draw between humans and animals, thinking of ourselves as dominant or superior, doesn't reflect early human reality. For much of evolution, our ancestors survived by being alert, evasive, and cooperative in the face of constant danger. Even today, in parts of South Asia and Africa, people still live in predator-rich environments. In the Sundarbans of India and Bangladesh, tigers continue to prey on humans. In earlier centuries, tiger attacks were tragically common, with thousands of deaths annually. People have developed creative strategies to avoid being hunted, wearing masks on the backs of their heads, using firecrackers, building shrines, or setting up electrified decoys. These modern stories echo an older truth, one written not in books, but in bones. Fossil evidence from South African caves suggests early human ancestors often fell victim to predators. Piles of bones, including those of hominins marked by tooth scratches and crushing, reveal a harsh reality. Early humans were frequently prey. Unlike today's humans with firearms and secure shelters, our ancestors had only rudimentary tools, stones, sticks, perhaps fire for protection. These were rarely enough against powerful, fast predators. Many evolutionary traits we now value, bipedalism, cooperation, heightened awareness, may have emerged from the need to survive, not dominate. Many evolutionary traits we now value, bipedalism, cooperation, heightened awareness, may have emerged from the need to survive, not dominate. This perspective challenges the traditional image of humans as heroic hunter. Instead of rising through aggression, we may have evolved key traits through vulnerability and evasion. For millions of years, human evolution may have been less about hunting and more about avoiding being hunted. Recognizing ourselves as part of the food chain, not always at the top, helps us view our evolutionary journey with greater humility. It also reminds us of nature's balance, where predators are not villains, but vital players in ecosystems that shaped who we are.